Hello, and welcome back to the Darby Creek Diaries. I'm Gail Thompson, and I'm so glad to be able to finally post a new video. I've been having terrible problems with my iMac. It's going so slow, and there's no apple bars open. Here's our project today. It's a Fluttering Santa by Art Impressions. It's a real cute little guy and not hard to make. I'm putting down some uh, sticky into my Mini Misty. This is uh, from Sizzix and it's just something that's like a little tacky strip and you can use it over and over and over. Um, that way you don't have to cut up one of those big sticky mats. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, stamp all the parts of the Santa at once. I wanted to leave room along the right hand side because I need to cut a couple of strips for his um, little pull tab. I also did some just blank. I did that and I, I doubled them up. It was 130 pound paper, but I wanted them to be pretty sturdy. So I'm just going to stamp them up. This is a new stamp, so I needed to double stamp it. I'm using Versa Fine Claire uh, in Nocturne, which is a beautiful ink, and I'm going to be Copic coloring. Uh, so that's the best ink to use for me. At least it was the one closest to my desk. And I'm just gonna line up the dies. Very easy to line up and run them through my Gemini Junior. This would also be a really cute set if you put them back to back and uh, put some phone tape between them. You could make just little toys with it and not necessarily a card front. Now I always put back, or at least I try to put back the, the protective page uh, when I'm not using it. I didn't need to do it then, but I did. And now I'm just sticking back all of the pieces in place right there on that sticky in my Misty. And it's easier to color them that way. I have colored too many things and then messed them up die cutting. So I tend to die cut first and then color. Um, it just seems to work better for me. And through the magic of television, there are my pieces all colored. Um, I'm not the best colorer and I just, feel that other people can teach you better. So I ought to let them. Now I'm going to glue my blanks to the back of my little Santa's pieces and parts. Any kind of glue would work for this. I do love art glitter glue. Um, I think it's very strong and I like the little needle tip. I'd like to give a quick shout out to Viani Create channel. I saw one of her tutorials and decided to pull this out of a pile that had been sitting in for a year because it looked kind of complicated, but she helped simplify it for me. So I will link her below and you might want to check her out. Now we're going to measure for the pull down tab. We're going to take the first row a quarter inch down and then the second they want a half inch below that. So that would be three quarters of an inch down. I'm just going to mark it with my T ruler. Um, I'm gonna actually do two pieces to give it a little bit of heft. And you're gonna see these little tiny, teeny weeny dies that I am certain I'm going to lose. Look at those. Well, we'll use that other part later. This is so that we can tie the legs and the arms to the pull tab. So I'm gonna run this through my Gemini and what I'm gonna do is double it up and I know it's not going to probably cut through all the way but it'll give me a nice mark so that I can line it up. And I have just ordered some purple tape that I think is going to be better than this purple tape. I think it's called Easy C, Easy C or CZ tape or something like that. Hopefully because this I, I like it but you just need to get the stick off. So there's where it kind of made an impression. And I'm going to run back through and do the second set and then just poke out the little dots there. Now I'm just gonna glue these together. I think I used a, enough glue there. Just lining them up. 
and that'll make it just much sturdier. It doesn't take that much longer to double up and I think it'll really help in the end because it won't bend quite as easily. So here are the little brads and they come, it comes with a little set of like four. So you can order them though, real easy. Now you're gonna put the brad in the outside hole of each uh, arm. Sorry, the dogs decided that it were gonna play right behind me. So I had to quiet them down. So you just keep going through this. It's real easy. I kind of make the brads a little loose, but not sloppy loose. And I kind of angle them away so they don't get in the way of the string later. I hope you are doing well. Um, the weather's really gloomy here in Ohio, but uh, we're looking forward to Halloween and the Buckeyes playing on Halloween. And hey, we're going to have an extra hour sleep Sunday. So there's something to live for, isn't it? Now I put that in the wrong hole and then I realized that his arm's a little short on that side. So I fixed it. Now it's time to do the, the stringing up. It's kind of tricky because I don't really want to bend the arms very much, but you kind of have to. It's not the easiest thing to finagle, but it can be done. It's, it's just not pretty to watch. But then a lot of what I do isn't pretty to watch. But we get her done. And, and the most important thing is that I'm going to show you the end project, product of what it's supposed to look like at each step, I promise. See, it's, that's what it's supposed to look like. And now we're going to endure the legs. The legs were harder. There just wasn't as much wiggle room to be able to get the, the string through. So I spared you most of that, I think. There. So that's how the th thread or whatever you use should look like. Now you don't want to use anything thick, but you want it to be pretty sturdy. Now just lay a pencil or something down the middle because they want you to make it loose enough for the mechanism to work, but not sloppy loose. So I found it easier to make the holes a little bit bigger for this particular string. I have no idea why I put that pencil there earlier. Hmm. Anyway, it doesn't need to go on until we get these uh, strings pulled through. I just noticed that, but I wanted to show you me weaving it through. Now we're going to lay everything out like we had it. Sometimes you just feel like you don't have enough hands, don't you? That's what it's supposed to look like. So I decided just to tape it down so the pencil wouldn't roll. And we're going to start tying. And you can tie it as tight as you want because that pencil is going to still give it slack when you pull the pencil back out. And then I'm just going to trim off anything that would show. There's just no real graceful way to show this. I could have used longer twine. It would have made it a lot easier. But it says on the package to cut six inches, so I cut six inches. So that's the mechanism. I'm trimming off the rest of that. Pull the pencil out. And there we have our Santa. Now I find out later 
that it works better when it's all put together and it has the pressure at the back of the card. Now this is to put the slit in the card uh, front and I didn't, I started out doing it the way they said and I will show you, I thought my Santa was too high and so I kept moving it down, but I'll show you that in a bit. They want you to go two inches down and then an inch and a half from the bottom. And you can put it anywhere you want on the card. It doesn't have to be centered if you don't want it to be. This thing is really kind of hard to finagle. I am <laughs> certain I am going to lose that. I'm sorry, I'm a bit off camera there and I didn't realize it, but I am just doing the same thing with the second slit. There you go. I'm going to run it through my Gemini Junior. And now I'm just going to put the uh, red piece on underneath my, my actual backing, which is the Snowflake Sizzix 3D embossing folder. I figured if I marked it on the red, then all I'd have to do is just cut through. So I'm going to glue it together. I'm just going to lay my snowflake panel on top of my red background panel. And uh, give it a gentle push and slice through these slits in order to get those on the front because I couldn't run the snowflakes through or I would smash them down. So now we're just going to try for to see if things fit. And this is the by gosh and by golly segment. And it, I, I learned along the way, see how high he is? I just didn't like it. So I decided to cut another slit even lower. You're never going to see it because it's going to be behind the Santa. So I dropped it down some more. Then, if you look, I dropped it down even more. <laughs> so, because there are two slits there to the right. So, you know, you just kind of practice and practice again. The whole back of this just looks sliced up, but you will still never see it because I'm gluing it onto a card base. And I'm trying really hard not to bend the paper because it'll start getting wonky here in a little bit. I'm still kind of trying to figure out Santa. And then I thought, well, I better put the pull tab stamp on. This would be a good spot to do it. And I protected my paper underneath. I should have done it when it wasn't even attached, but hey, what was I thinking? Hmm, I don't know. Fortunately, it stamped pretty good on the first try. Now I'm double checking my mechanism. The only place you can put adhesive is right there on his hat because you have to leave room for our little pull thing to go up and down. So I doubled up uh, Scrapbook Adhesives 3D squares. So they're too deep. And that gets Santa up off the card a little bit. Gives him some wiggle room, pun intended. <clears throat> and I, I really like the fact that this scrapbook adhesive, you can get the release paper off. Some of that is so hard to get off. And then I took my powder bag because I thought it just seemed like the thing to do. Kind of make things slide around a little better. And then just removed the uh, little backing paper and once again we're going to slide her through. And this time I'm going to stick Santa's head down and I'm still kind of not terribly thrilled. There's what it looks like from the side and he's still kind of high probably but see how it's got a double thickness and then you can see that the mechanism is loose enough in the back but it still works best when you get it on the card base. So I'm getting the backing tape off of that 
the and I just put one layer of a adhesive tape, the foam tape, and I'm going to layer it onto my card front. And I'm telling you, it works so much better. It'll even work better here in a minute. When I find out if you lay it down and pull it, it works great. Now I don't want to glue this down over the pull tab, so I'm just going to glue three sides of it. I thought a little sentiment would be good, but I can't raise it up. I don't want anything to get away in the way of his little boots. So I'm just gonna one layer, make sure it's uh, level. I don't usually use rulers that much, but I felt I needed to this time. There we go. So now look, look, both the arms and the feet go. I'm so excited. Now this isn't something I would mass produce, but isn't it cute? I hope you enjoyed this video and you'll come back and see me and like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Here are some other videos that may interest you. I hope you are well and I hope you have some time to go out and craft and take care. Bye-bye.